My name is Howard Bailey. My name is Vanessa Vaquis Mendoza. I was originally from Jamaica. I was 15 years old when I came to New York. I was born in El Salvador and I left when I was nine years old to the United States. I signed up for the military. I got married. I started a family. And I started my trucking business. Things finally was looking up. When I was 16, I got pregnant. My oldest son, Jason, he had Pompe disease, rare disease, didn't have no cure. Get out there, Jason! He used to be like, Mom, stop screaming so much because you embarrass me. <laughs> In 1995, I just got out of the military then, fresh, not even six months, and I get arrested for marijuana. My lawyer told me I had to plead guilty because it's Virginia Beach, I'm black, and I'm Jamaican. I didn't think that in 2010 that the marijuana conviction that happened 14 years ago would have came back and haunt me. About 5.30 in the morning, I heard a big knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. And I opened the door. And then it was like, Howard Bailey? I was like, yes, sir, that's me. Did you apply for citizenship like six months ago? I'm like, yeah. And it was like, turn around, that's why we're here. I'm like, what? And they just grabbed me, man. And he just put the cuffs on me. And I was like, what's going on? He was like, yeah, you're getting deported. And my daughter came down and saw me in the handcuffs. She was crying and screaming and asking why they're taking him. My daughter lost me. My wife lost me. My son lost me. I was separated from everyone that I love. It was a day before Jason's birthday. I wanted to do him a little party. I went to the store with a friend of mine's. She was like, oh, let's just take it. A group of migrant women is coming forward with claims that they were the victims of unwanted and unnecessary medical procedures at a federal detention center in Georgia. Surgeries were performed on several detainees without them fully understanding what was happening. As a female, it feels like somebody just run you over and left you destroyed. That's how it feels, because it's something that they did to you and you have no idea. After surgery, I was bleeding every day. I was not getting no answers. I told my dad, I'm gonna sign the deportation. At least in Salvador, I can find a doctor that is going to help me and find out what's going on. I was in Jamaica. Oh man, I didn't know what to do. Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on Immigration, Citizenship, and Border Safety. We'll now turn to Mr. Bailey, who's participating virtually. Mr. Bailey, please proceed with your testimony. I have now been living in exile for eight years. Ten years if I include the two I spent in immigration jail fighting my case. The last time I saw my home was ten years ago. And since then, life feel like a total nightmare. Every day I hope that I would wake up and just be back home in Virginia again. And I remember going to the bathroom and looking in that mirror. I don't know who I was looking at. I'm just asking for a chance to come home to the country I love, the country I serve, the, the States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. 
when I come back to El Salvador, I was like, Dad, I'm not going to make it. Like, oh my God, what am I doing here? When my mom got deported, it changed a lot in my life. My mom was responsible for my medicine, taking me to the doctor. I was just lost. I looked like a 15, 16 year old and lost. Everything went downhill. I remember where I was at. I was in the country. The signal, the phone, the phone signal was not even working that good. They told me like, I looked over your case and they decided to overturn your immigration case. Oh my God, man. Mr. Bailey fought for our country and I'm happy to fight for him. I saw Brandon, when I left here, Brandon was this high. I'm back in the trucking business. Everything st st start coming right back. You still feel good to be out there. You get your mind free. You focus on the road. Like therapy to me, I feel I needed this. It's hard because I'm not there. I got to hear him through the phone. I got to see him like his voice. He doesn't sound like my baby no more. He sounds like a man now. And it's hard that I'm missing those special moments that I should be there. I hope that I do get a chance to go back and spend as much as time I can with my kids, to be there with them, to see them grow up and do things right. We're gonna have to wait and just see what happens in court. I'm gonna have to wait and see what happens. I'm gonna see everything going good. I'll be back there soon. 